What we're going to be looking at here is financial derivative used in speculation where the option expires with no value and we'll just look at a basic put and call option. So first starting with our put option. That gives you the right to sell some stock here at a preset price and uh, this preset price they refer to as the strike price. Now with the put option here this is the case where you want to uh, buy it here at a lower market price here and you want to sell it at the higher strike price then you would have a gain here and when you're dealing with these options here they're really broken down into two elements here they have the intrinsic value portion of the option and then the time value portion now the intrinsic value that's really the difference between the market and the strike price here and the time value portion that's a market appraisal here and that's based uh, looking at the where the options fair value is greater than zero and that would be the case here when you purchase the option and that's what the case where when the market in the, when you purchase the option here the market price would equal the strike price so there it wouldn't the difference here wouldn't give you an intrinsic value here and then the time value that would be assigned the total price of the option here would be assigned to the time value portion okay so let's for, go in next into our a call option here well that's just the opposite of the put option that gives you the right to buy some stock here so what you want to do here is you want to buy it here at a lower strike price here and you want to sell it at a higher market price okay so what we're going to be looking at in this example here is the case where you wouldn't execute the option here so in the case for the put option here if the a market price here that you buy it at would be greater than the strike price that you can sell it at then you wouldn't execute the option and then for the call option here that would be just the opposite here so you would if you would have to buy it here if well if you would first off if you would buy it at our strike price here and the market price that you sell it at here would be less than our strike price then you wouldn't execute the option okay so let's go and let's look at our example here okay so we're going to be just looking at it in terms of a put option here so this is the case here where corp a purchases a put option on port corp b stock here for 360 dollars and uh, that's what the option costs them here and the option is for 400 shares of stock here that they can par uh, uh, for corp b stock here and the strike price is set here at 70 dollars per share okay so what we're going to be looking at here when you're dealing with these options what you have to look at is your uh, when you purchase the option here and then when in this case we're going to look at when the option expires here we're going to have these dates and, and we have it broken down here we break them down between its intrinsic value portion here which is the market price change in the market prices here per share and then you look at the change here in, in, the, in the intrinsic value portion here and then you have the time value of the option here there we're going to look at that here and then again you're looking at the change here in the option from period to period. Okay, so when we're dealing with these options, first let's go down and look at what we're talking about here. You set up your option account. In this case, we're looking at it as a put option account, it would be an asset on the balance sheet, and that's for Corp B stock here. And what we're going to be looking at is the changes here in the intrinsic value here and the time value. And we're going to be recording those in the option account here, any increases and decreases. And then along with this option account is tied in any uh, an unrealized holding gain or or loss here it goes into the income statement here uh, for any changes here in our put option account okay so let's first look at the case here where we purchase this option so uh, for our put option here it cost us $360 so we debited here for $360 and then in our cash account that's the price we paid credit our cash or reduce our cash here for $360 okay so now let's go up and let, we're going to look at the case here where we're going to let this option expire that's what it's looking at in our example here and the reason we're doing that here is this here we can sell at our strike price here that's this uh, uh, sh uh, price that we can sell our shares at here seventy dollars per share but on each of our dates here our shares that the market price here that we'd have to buy these shares at here is greater than our strike price here that we sell them at so there wouldn't be any re you would not want to execute this option here because you'd have to buy them at a greater market price here than you could sell them at here at the strike price so 
regardless what our changes are here in between our market price over the periods here you were just looking at it let's look at our first period of seventy dollars moves up to seventy seven so we had a change here seventy seven dollars per share but then it moved down here the next period to seventy five so a reduction here two dollars per share and then it moves up here to seventy eight uh, when we let it expire here at uh, by three dollars per share okay so first looking at this intrinsic value here so the point is here um, it has no intrinsic value. There is no market value in this case here. And we're not going to look at the case where it would have it, but in this case, it doesn't have any market value because the sell price here, or strike price is less than the purchase price or the market price that we'd have to buy those shares at. So in our put option account, it, it we would just record, it, it would, there would be no value, so we wouldn't be recording any value. I'm just showing some uh, zeros here to, so you understand what we're talking about for these periods here. So for our first period here, we had that increase, but it was a zero increase, the intrinsic value. So unrealized holding gain or loss, uh, in this case, it would have been, it has no gain or loss here, just a zero here. And then that next period here, be here even though it went down two dollars here again the intrinsic value here zero and then unrealized gains and losses zero here and then and our last period here where we let it expire here uh, it had a zero value here so again no gain or loss that's the only point I'm trying to make here with the example here where we are not gonna we're gonna let this option expire but now moving over to our time value portion so that is what we have to record here because it and looking at our amounts here it decreases in value over time here uh, and we started out here with three hundred and sixty dollars per sh uh, for the value of the option that's strictly the value itself here and it moved down to $180 per share here, at, or excuse me, in value here, down to $180. So our change is a difference here, $180, a reduction here, $180. So this is where the option, it actually has some effect here on our put option. So moving down in value, we'd credit or reduce our put option account here for that time value portion here at $180, total amount here. And then as an unrealized holding in this case loss here to income on our income statement debit that here for $180 and then looking at our next period here well it moved down from 180 to $65 so we have a change here a negative change $115 here so again moving down to our put option account here the time value portion credit or reduce our put option account here for $115 and then moving over to our unrealized holding gain we would recognize an excuse me an unrealized holding loss here of 115 dollars and then our last uh, date here we had uh, moved from 65 down to zero here uh, so we had again a put option account here reduces here to it was settled here that was at the settlement date here the option expires reduce our put option account here for 65 dollars so that would go as an unrealized holding loss here on our income here of $65. Now, these other losses here would have were accounted for in our other periods here, but uh, just looking at our settlement date here, that was in the year here, 115x2, uh, we would look at a realized loss here. Uh, even though I'm showing the unrealized holding gains and losses here, it would be a realized loss here of $65. So, going back to our... Uh, our put option account here just to go over that intrinsic value or change in market value what what that means here so again the option has no intrinsic value when the strike price here is below the uh, strike price is below the market price here so we would have to buy at a higher market price here and sell at a lower strike price and that would be for a loss so we wouldn't do that here and then Again, for our call option, just the opposite would be true here. For our call option, if the strike price would be above the market price, there would be no intrinsic value. So you'd have to buy at the, at the higher strike price here, and you would have to sell it at a lower market price, and that would be for a loss. So you're not going to execute the option here in that case. So that's the case here where the put option account doesn't get assigned anything here in, for the market uh, change in our market uh, price here in shares uh, simply and then I'm just showing zero values in our put option account for the intrinsic portion here but that it 
that's only because there it has no value here again because the strike price here is lower that's the price that we have to sell those shares at is lower than the market price that we have to purchase those shares at so this is just the case here where we wanted to look at the case where the we let that option expire we actually purchased the option here we paid three hundred sixty dollars for it and then we had to record that in our put option account here as an asset on account but in, in we taking care of that we uh, moved for each of those periods or our change here in our time value from the 360 down to the zero dollar amount here we had to reduce our put option for each of those periods here that we had that change but we gone over to our unreal and for any of those changes here in our put option or our decrease in our time value we went over to our unrealized holding in this case loss here as part of income so that's the key here to our income statement and the only reason i'm showing this last when we we call it the settled head here we let it expire here all we did is we just again just looked at the change in that time value that was that sixty five dollars down to zero dollar amount here so in this case here i'm showing it as a realized loss here just so you understand that okay so that takes care of our uh, in looking at our put option here, that takes care of it where we it didn't have any value here because of the prices here. Change in our, our strike price was less than a market price. Now that would be the op opposite would be true if we set up a call option account, just so you have to understand that. So uh, in that case here, you would have a higher uh, strike price here and then the market price the market prices would have been lower we didn't go through that here but you just have to go through that reasoning here so in case of a call option if that was the case again you wouldn't be recording any intrinsic value here in your call option account if if that if it if you just let it expire and it would just be a zero amount so that'll take a uh, look at our case here for the case where these you just let the option expire when after you purchase it here okay so that'll take care of our subject